So now that we know, we can get the electric field by taking the derivatives of my potential. It turns out that it might be sometimes easier to work out what this potential is first and then just take the derivative to get the electric field. And hopefully this example demonstrates that in the context of a distributed charge distribution. And for a distributed charge distribution, in this case a ring, we would cut it up into many point charges and for each point charge we would have this term which because electric field includes the effects of the direction which may make things sometimes messy. We do a very similar thing with potential. For a point charge the potential is given by kq over r but this r here there's no no direction. Direction does not matter. Potential is a scalar. There is no direction. So you might imagine if we integrate such things, instead of q, we have dq, which applies over here as well. It should be quite a bit easier, and a lot of times it is. And once we have the potential, then we can just use this derivative to get my electric field, which is exactly what the question is asking us to do. Again, we're going to treat this ring as a bunch of point charges. So this point charge here with low dq is our job again to find out how big that dq is. So in this case, they give us a linear charge density. So it's lambda times the little bit of length. In this case, the length is given by the arc length, which is r d theta, d theta being this little bit. And that kind of informs us that we're integrating with respect to theta. That's not so bad. The r here, the distance in this case, happened to be the same for every point. Because in the end, it's really just the magnitude that matters. So just because they point in all different directions, that doesn't change the fact that here my displacement vector is rqp, which is the final minus original yet again. And if you want to do it formally, you can say that this is zk minus sine theta in the i, oops, r sine theta in the i, and then minus r cosine theta in j. Again, we don't really care about the direction, we just care about the magnitude, which for all the points will work out the same, which is z square plus r square square root. And you can see that from the diagram, we're talking about this length here. Always the same for the whole circle. Well, that makes your integral really easy then. Because we're dropping all those directional information, there's no unit vector that we have to consider. This becomes quite, really quite simple. The limit to integration is from 0 to 2 pi to go through the whole circle. And there you go. We have the electrical potential of all the points that are along the z-axis. Maybe a little easier just because we don't have to deal with the direction. Then the next step is to find out the electric field of all the points along the z-axis. So given that we know the potential along the points on the z-axis, we can use this to consider all my directions. Don't forget that negative. In this case, there's no x or y dependence because there's no x or y in the expression right here. So all we have to care about is the z. We could almost change it to a regular derivative now because there's only one variable. And this one is just not a simple chain rule, which gives us, we get the negative one half up front because of the negative one half power. The bottom becomes three halves. Uh, k hat stays the same. Then up top, you need to include in the chain rule the 2z. The 2 cancels out. The 2 negative cancels out. And we can put 2 pi z like that, all to the power of three halves in the k hat. And if you kind of group this as the 2 pi r, which is the entire length, times the lambda, that's just overall q of the ring. And this should give us the exact same answer as before, which may or may not be simpler, but it's just an alternate way to get at calculating the electric field by first getting the potential by summing up a bunch of point charge potential and the sum is easier because there's no direction. And then we take the derivative of that. And that actually brings the direction back in because you notice the ijk is over here.